Pagbalik maririnig malakas na ugong Malilikaid ang buhala, sunod-sunod na alon Pwersa nito ay sobrang lakas Lampas limang metro along hahampas Kaya doon lumikas sa lugar na mataas Plano sa paglikas, susi upang maging ligtas Tsunami, tsunami, karya na sa isang isang Tsunami, tsunami, kailangang maging magam Tsunami, tsunami, karya na sa isang isang Tsunami, tsunami, kailangang maging magam Lampas limang metro, along hahampas Kaya doon lumikas sa lugar na mataas Lalo sa paglikas, susi upang maging ligtas Tsunami, tsunami, karya na sa isang isang Tsunami, tsunami, kailangang maging magam Tsunami, tsunami, karya na sa isang Tsunami, tsunami, kailangang maging maga Tsunami, 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 tsunami Lalim ng dagat, nagmula ang lindol Tubig dagat, bababa, ito'y uurong Pagbalik maririnig, malakas na ugong Malilikaid ang buhala, sunod-sunod na alon Pwersa nito ay sobrang lakas Lampas limang metro, along hahampas Kaya doon lumikas sa lugar na mataas Plano sa paglikas, susi upang maging ligtas Tsunami, tsunami, karya na sa isang isap Tsunami, tsunami, kailangang maging magam Tsunami, tsunami Karya na sa isang isang Tsunami, tsunami Kailangang maging pagam Pwersa nito ay sobrang lakas Lampas limang metro, along hahampas kaya doon lumikas sa lugar na mataas Lalo sa paglikas, susi upang maging ligtas Tsunami, tsunami, karya na sa isang isap Tsunami, tsunami, kailangang maging magam Tsunami, tsunami, karya na sa isang isap Tsunami Tsunami, kailangang maging magam Tsunami, 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 tsunami Kapag sa ilalim ng dagat, 
nagmula ang lindol Tubig dagat bababa Ito'y uuro Pagbalik maririnig Malakas na ugong Malilikaid ang buhala Sunod-sunod na alon Pwersa nito ay sobrang lakas Lampas limang metro along hahampas Kaya doon lumikas sa lugar na mataas Plano sa paglikas Susi upang maging ligtas Tsunami, tsunami Narya na sa isang isap Tsunami, tsunami Kailangan maging magam Tsunami, tsunami Narya na sa isang isap Tsunami, tsunami Kailangan maging magam Pwersa nito ay sobrang lakas Nampas limang metro along hahampas Kaya doon lumikas sa lugar na mataas Lalo sa paglikas, susi upang maging ligtas Tsunami, tsunami, narya na sa isang isap Tsunami, tsunami, kailangan maging magam Tsunami, tsunami, narya na sa isang isap Tsunami, tsunami, kailangan maging magam Tsunami Kapag sa ilalim ng dagat Nagmula ang lindol Tubig dagat bababa Ito'y uuro Pagbalik maririnig Malakas na ugong Malilikaid ang buhala Sunod-sunod na alon Pwersa nito ay sobrang lakas Lampas limang metro along hahampas Kaya doon lumikas sa lugar na mataas Plano sa paglikas, susi upang maging ligtas Tsunami, tsunami, narya na sa isang isap Tsunami, tsunami, kailangan maging magam Tsunami, tsunami Narya na sa isang isang Tsunami, tsunami Kailangan maging magam Pwersa nito ay sobrang lakas Lampas limang metro along hahampas kaya doon lumikas sa lugar na mataas Lalo sa paglikas, susi upang maging ligtas Tsunami, tsunami, narya na sa isang isap Tsunami, tsunami, kailangan maging magam Tsunami, tsunami, narya na sa isang isap Tsunami, Tsunami, kailangan maging maga Tsunami, 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 tsunami
Pag sa ilalim ng dagat Nagmula ang lindol Tubig dagat bababa Ito'y uurong Pagbalik maririnig Malakas na ugong Malilikaid ang buhala Sunod-sunod na alon Pwersa nito ay sobrang lakas Lampas limang metro along hahampas Kaya doon lumikas sa lugar na mataas Plano sa paglikas Susi upang maging ligtas Tsunami, tsunami Karya na sa isang isap Tsunami, tsunami Kailangang maging magam Tsunami, tsunami Karya na sa isang isap Tsunami, tsunami Kailangang maging magam Pwersa nito ay sobrang lakas Lampas limang metro along hahampas Kaya doon lumikas sa lugar na mataas Lalo sa paglikas, susi upang maging ligtas Tsunami, tsunami, narya na sa isang isap Tsunami, tsunami, kailangang maging magam Tsunami, tsunami, narya na sa isang isap Tsunami, tsunami, kailangang maging magam Good morning to all of you, and uh, I'm Mylene Martinez Villagas, a Chief Science Research Specialist of the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology. And uh, welcome, Pa. Welcome to the Info Center of Vivox uh, with today's theme: Tsunami Awareness, Community Preparedness, and Proper Response in the New Normal. And before anything else, we would like to acknowledge the presence of many, many friends, our guests for this morning. Um, our friends from uh, the local DRR offices na nandito po ngayon, ang ating po mga sudyante, ang mga guro, and our partners. Uh, we have with us this morning, uh, Jaika Philippines, from the Jaika Philippines office, uh, Ms. Ichiro Mototani, and of course, uh, various DOST regional offices from Region 10, 9, 2, and CR. I, I saw them kanina po. And uh, also some DOST agencies like SCII, nandito na po. And even MGB and uh, DPWH. So marami marami salamat po. Uh, but of course, we would like to uh, also acknowledge the presence of some of our friends from the media. And dito na po ang UNTV, News 5, FEBC, and uh, we are waiting for some more. So maraming salamat po for coming. This morning's um, program, maikli lang po, um, we will give you a brief background about uh, World Tsunami Awareness Day, and then our guest, of course, you sexually doom, will talk about um, our programs. And the most exciting part, uh, meron po tayong pa contest, and uh, ngayon po natin na sa mga winners. Reminder lang po, uh, before we begin, uh, the typical uh, announcements about netiquette. If you haven't changed, kindly rename po your username following po yung format na to. 
first your affiliation and then your full name para po ma-recognize namin kayo. The way to change it, punta lang po kayo dun sa pag nakikita nyo yung uh, uh, inyong image sa screen and then click po yung sa inyo na image and then uh, makikita nyo po yung sa participants and then you just have to type in your name if you have to change uh, and we also would like to request if you can fill out the attendance. Uh, you post pa nila sa chat box so you can see it. And just click that so that we can have your attendance. Uh, names na nakalista po sa attendance. And at the end of this uh, uh, morning's presentations, we would like to request also for your evaluation as this is part of our standard uh, way to make sure that uh, we keep on improving the way we deliver our services to you. So, paki-fill out lang po. So, yun po. Ibabalik po natin yung isang slide. Today, we are one with all other countries in the observance of the World Tsunami Awareness Day for 2020, or simply we call it WITAD sa atin po dito sa Pilipinas. And for a brief background, um, in December of 2015, the United Nations General Assembly actually designated Today, November 5, as the World Tsunami Awareness Day to promote the global culture of tsunami awareness. And uh, it's actually, the date was chosen in celebration of and in honor of a Japanese story, uh, Inamura no Hi, which means burning of the rice sheaves. Uh, during which in 1854, my isang farmer po, uh, who saw the tide receding as a sign of a tsunami coming. And so he set fire his entire harvest to warn the villagers. So yun po yung pinag-umpisahan kung bakit 5 November sa mga nagtataka po. So what have we done? Uh, since 2016, the Philippines have participated in various activities to commemorate this event. And uh, during 2016, the first time we did it, we actually held an open house and invited uh, students to attend the talks about tsunami, and visit our exhibit area. So ito po yung naganap. We always open our doors to students and teachers. Uh, kaya po welcome po kayo lahat. Nung time po na wala pang pandemic. But now, we can always request for materials and uh, have access to webinars like this. In 2017, we actually moved this time to Sambales. And in uh, partnership with the local provincial government of Sambales and DepEd, we held an exhibit and a series of lectures again for students. And we even had a guest, our longtime partner uh, from JICA, uh, JICA Philippines office. We had um, Miss uh, Erica Inoue at that time, which, during which she shared uh, their experience during the 2011 tsunami. And uh, in 2018, uh, we partnered this time with the city of Paranaque and uh, DOS NCR for tsunami orientation and exhibit for students and teachers. Uh, in the Paranaque City. And last year, lipat na naman kami, we went to Mindoro uh, to commemorate together yung 25th year of the 1994 November Oriental Mindoro earthquake and tsunami. Uh, we partnered with the Provincial Office of uh, Oriental Mindoro and the City of Calapan. And we actually unveiled the uh, tsunami signage and uh, did um, exhibit as well as lecture series. So this year, we lined up a series of activities uh, to commemorate uh, World Tsunami Awareness Day. And this morning, yan po yung kick-off natin. We'll be having the Inspo Centro. And uh, this afternoon, there will be a FIVOX InfoBeat, wherein one of our geologists will talk about a tsunami hazards and risks in the Philippines. And tomorrow morning, we will have another InfoBeat. Uh, Preparedness naman po, tsunami preparedness and proper response. So ito po yan tomorrow. Sana po ay makasama rin po namin kayo.
And USEC Solidum, our speaker for this morning, will also have another lecture on November 10. Ang uh, scenario po ng National Simultaneous Earthquake Drill ay tungkol pa din po sa tsunami. So, we are very, very happy to have with us this morning, of course, uh, the head of FIVOX and the Undersecretary uh, of DOST, USEC Renato Yusilidum, to talk about um, DOS FIVOX Tsunami Disaster Risk Reduction Program. And uh, later on, we will announce the winners for the contest. Sir? Thank you. Thank you, Mylene. Um, let me share the a presentation with you. <clears throat> As we all know, the Philippines is part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, where many large earthquake events have occurred and have triggered tsunami. The latest large magnitude tsunami occurred in Japan in 2011. We are familiar with many of these uh, earthquake events. And uh, earthquakes in the Philippines are so numerous. Um, we record more than 5,000 earthquakes per year. And in the past 400 years, 100 plus earthquakes became destructive. Some of which were generated offshore, nasa Karagatan, and generated tsunami waves. Many people are familiar with the effects of earthquakes, especially with the occurrence of earthquakes in the past years, including those that occurred in Southern Philippines in Cotabato and Davao del Sur provinces. Many are familiar with the rupture of the ground because the faults would break the surface if it's uh, triggering large magnitude earthquake events. But most of the hazards that uh, people would feel would be related to the strong shaking of the ground that would cause the collapses of houses and buildings or sometimes soft ground will behave like quicksand and liquefy. We are also familiar with the landslides triggered by earthquake events. Sometimes strong shaking will be followed by fire. However, not many areas in the Philippines have been recently affected by tsunami. But if we recall, in uh, the past large earthquake events, way back in 1976, a magnitude 8.1 earthquake occurred in celibacy, in particular the Morogo, and triggered a tsunami as high as 9 meters. And the first wave arrived in the coastline two to five minutes after the earthquake. And this devastated southwestern Mindanao. In 1994, a magnitude 7.1 earthquake occurred, offshore, occurred in Mindoro and most likely triggered a submarine landslide that caused a tsunami five minutes after the earthquake, and the height of the tsunami was as high as eight meters. Tsunamis arrive very fast in the Philippines, and we need to prepare for this. What are tsunamis? Tsunamis are essentially waves, can be small to sometimes large, resulting from the disturbance. Na di disturbo po yung tubig. The, the seawater by under the sea earthquakes, landslides, volcanic eruptions, and sometimes meteor impact. It can drown people. It can actually devastate agricultural land near the shore. Water supply is uh, affected because salt water would intrude. This would carry big things like ships, boulders that can impact people and destroy houses. Tsunamis are generated by uh, most often by large earthquake events, and these are associated with the uplift or uh, vertical motion of the seafloor. The figure on the top left would show you that when there is an earthquake associated with the movement of the ocean floor, the water will also rise and in essentially the shoreline water will recede towards the center of the ocean and uh, people would notice it 
as a sudden drop, and eventually this would go back. Sometimes earthquakes are associated with landslides, nearshore landslides or offshore landslides. And this has happened also uh, in the Philippines. In some cases, tsunamis are associated or generated by volcanic eruptions. Uh, in the Philippines, uh, volcanic tsunamis have been generated in Taal Volcano because it is surrounded by Taal Lake. Another large uh, tsunami can be generated by meteor impact or pagbagsak ng bulalakaw, but these are very uncommon. So our focus would be earthquake-generated tsunamis and landslide-generated tsunamis as a consequence. So we need to find out which areas in the Philippines are prone to tsunami and why. Where are these earthquake generators that would cause a tsunami? If you look at a map of the Philippines, we subdivide earthquake generators into two main groups. The first is what we call trenches. Trenches are where big blocks of the ocean or rocks would dive beneath the Philippines, and where they start to dive, it is called a trench. These are long and narrow depression in the ocean. And just for info, the second deepest part of the ocean in the world is the Mindanao Deep offshore of Surigao, which is part of the Philippine Trench. Trenches are shown there as white lines with teeth marks. So on the eastern side, we have the East Luzon and Philippine Trench. On the western side, we have the Manila, Negros, Sulu trenches, and on the southern side, we have the Cotabato trench. However, because of the collision of uh, ocean blocks on both sides of the country, the archipelago is weakened and active faults are generated. These are shown as red lines. And some of these active faults would actually extend or occur offshore. And when these would move, they can also generate inland, uh, uh, they can also generate tsunamis in the inland seas. So let me show you where the trenches are. Trenches are demarcated uh, by the uh, lines with teeth marks shown on the right side of the cartoon would be a blue colored space. It's called the Philippine Sea. And the Philippine Sea would dive towards the west along the East Luzon and Philippine trenches. While those green colored parts which would cover the West Philippine Sea, Sulu Sea, and Celebes Sea, would dive beneath the Western Philippines towards the east. And on the southern side, we have uh, uh, in Mindanao another trench, but actually does not uh, appear in Mindanao, but in Indonesia, part of the Molucca Sea plate, uh, where the plate is found, the subduction or diving of the plate starts in the Sardinia Trench. So, the trenches are where large earthquakes are generated and tsunamis can be generated. So you can see we are the only country, the Philippines is the only country where trenches would be found on both sides of the country. And hence both sides of the country would need to prepare for tsunamis. Aside from that, the, west, the eastern side of the country faces the Pacific Ocean or the Circum Pacific Ring of Fire where earthquakes and tsunamis can also be generated and which can arrive in the Philippines. Why is it important to prepare for earthquake and tsunamis? We have seen the devastation and impacts of COVID-19 and these are shown as impacts in underline like life loss with the diseases, the interruption of public and other services, the social disruption of families, individuals, and businesses because of mobility restriction, quarantine, and we see disruption of our economic development. And people are displaced when they cannot move or when they are quarantined outside of their houses. But if there are large earthquakes and tsunamis, we will be able to see far more devastating impacts beyond COVID-19 is now we will see the physical impacts to buildings, infrastructures, properties, equipment, impact to water supply like pipes, electrical supply, communication systems like towers will be affected, roads, bridges, ports, rails can be affected. In addition to the physical impact to people because of 
of the collapsing houses or to the impact of the large volume of water carrying with it with the debris. Hence, the impact for economic development will be very, very large. What we need to do is prepare for the tsunami. And a tsunami risk reduction program, which is being followed by FIVOX, addresses four goals. First goal is to understand the tsunami and manage the hazard and the risk or the potential loss that it will bring. And the priority actions would cover the following. And 1.3 to 1.1 to 1.3 there is covered by FIVOX, tsunami hazard mapping and modeling, tsunami hazard and risk assessment, essentially knowing which areas will be affected and what will happen to the people, to the communities in the danger zone. The third is uh, being supported by FIVOX through development of science, technology, and innovation, information, and services so that other government organizations, the communities, and the public will be able to prepare and reduce the potential harm that tsunamis will inflict. 1.4 tsunami response and recovery is not handled by DOST but by other agencies, but we have some application, mobile application, that can help in the response and recovery. Goal number two is to detect the possible occurrence of an earthquake and a tsunami, and then warn and disseminate the information. And that is covered in 2.1, monitoring and detection network development. 2.2 is early warning systems where other levels of society would need to also pitch in, and development of tsunami alerts and warnings. More importantly, we have to make sure that at the various levels of our society, tsunami preparedness is enhanced so that there will be effective community response. And this would need public education. That is why the World Tsunami Awareness Day is a very important initiative globally to educate the public, not only about the hazards of a tsunami, but more importantly, how to prepare for it. And with increased awareness by the community, we hope that this will also enable people to work together and Filipinos of this Bayanian spirit so that the community will be prepared. It is not simply an individual preparedness, but a community preparedness. We need each other to prepare and respond in case there will be a tsunami. Lastly, goal number four is we need to have intern continuous international coordination and cooperation. And I'm very happy to note that one of our partner organizations, the Japan International Cooperation Agency, is represented here in this activity. Let me give you some idea of what we are doing in terms of understanding, understanding tsunami hazards and the potential risk. In this part, I will tell you um, which areas in the Philippines are prone to tsunami. I will also show you the simulation in different parts of the Philippines, how fast the arrival of the tsunami will be and the likely height of the tsunami. And third, provide you with an idea of the number of people exposed to tsunami hazards in the Philippines. If you look at the tsunami prone area map of the Philippines shown in the left, you will note there that there are different colors. The different colors would tell you that certain areas in the Philippines can be affected either by only local tsunami or both by local tsunami and distant tsunami. What is a local tsunami? Local or near real tsunami are those that are generated within the Philippines. Boundary. And because there are trenches bound, bounding the Philippines, trenches would generate the local tsunami. Or if there are offshore faults, when they move, they can generate a tsunami. They can also be considered as a threat. So the red lines there would show you coastal areas prone to both local and distant tsunami. That will be on the eastern side of the Philippines. The yellow colored coastline there will be those affected by uh, local tsunami because they are in front of uh, trenches. Those blue colored coastlines there will be affected by local tsunami uh, because of offshore faults or submarine landslide. 
So what is important uh, in, in these two types of tsunami? A local tsunami will have a lead time after the occurrence of an earthquake of most likely two to 10 minutes if the shoreline is near the epicenter, maybe up to an hour if it is further away. If it's a distant tsunami generated outside of the Philippines, we will have more than one hour if it's like in Taiwan or maybe three to four hours if it's in Japan to 26 hours if it's in Chile. So there is enough lead time for a distant or far field tsunami, but this will, might not be enough if communities do not know what to do if they are not prepared. More so, preparedness is very important because rapid response is needed for locally generated tsunami. What have we done? Since the earthquake function has been transferred to FIVOX and starting in uh, 2003, we really have focused on uh, mapping which areas will be affected by tsunami. So we have produced various maps. We have produced uh, the indicative map showing the coastal areas that are prone to various types of tsunami. We have prepared at the province and municipal level, one is to 50,000 scale maps and more detailed maps, one is to 10,000 in cities. In particular in Metro Manila, we have a one is to 5,000 scale map where you can actually see uh, very clearly uh, the different barangays in Metro Manila, and we'll also show you the potential heights of tsunami in various places. We are also conducting tsunami modeling. Shown on the left is a model of a magnitude 8.3 earthquake generated tsunami. And you would notice that uh, on the top left, you would see a uh, uh, the number of minutes in red, the number of minutes it will take for tsunami to arrive in the coastline. For example, if our reference is the political boundary of Metro Manila, it will take maybe one, and, one to one and a half hours before the tsunami would arrive in the coastal boundary of Manila, Metro Manila, depending on where the tsunami would start. The height of the tsunami in uh, Metro Manila can uh, be up to close to six meters and shown on the map would be how far inland the tsunami will flood many areas in the Philippines. We have developed uh, many programs to further refine uh, the potential tsunamis in the Philippines. But what is important is we first need to know how strong the earthquakes are uh, if this would occur offshore. We need to evaluate the potential of large earthquakes and possible tsunami generation in offshore areas of the Philippines. We do this by conducting active fault mapping in offshore areas through geophysical methods, and also looking at uplifted coastal terraces, especially corals, that would tell us how large the earthquakes are and how large the vertical movement uh, uh, that are associated with large earthquakes uh, offshore. These are important and we will continue to do this. We also have developed a hazards and risk assessment software called RADAS. Uh, and this would have various uh, uh, algorithms or functions. The first is to assess the potential earthquake hazard. And uh, also, it has a uh, module on tsunami simulation. So you can simulate um, any earthquake and the possible tsunami that it can produce in various parts of the Philippines. Second is it has exposure data algorithm. It can store locations, descriptions of houses and buildings, and even the number of people. So that when we try to assess the potential impact of an earthquake or a tsunami, we will be able to do so. That is why in, in the third module, we have impact assessments for earthquake, also for tsunami. And just for information, we also have impact assessment modules for flood and strong wind. Let me show you some of the tsunami simulations, starting from the eastern side of the Philippines to the western side and down south. For example, if there's a magnitude 8.5 earthquake in the East Luzon Trench, you will see that some areas will be affected in a few minutes with various heights. 
So in the next series of uh, slides, I will show you the different simulations and we'll show you also the calculated heights at the coast and the number of minutes it will take for the tsunami to arrive. So in this scenario from the East Luzon graph, as shown will be the calculation points, the names of the calculation points, the heights of the tsunami in the coast and the arrival time. In summary, you would note that as high as close to 16 meters uh, uh, of tsunami and uh, usually less than 15 minutes, sometimes as early as three minutes arrival time uh, would be calculated. And the further away, like for example, uh, the Jose Panganiban Camarines Norte calculation point, because it's too far, it will take around 42 minutes. In essence, the closer to the source of the tsunami, the faster the arrival time, and um, the heights can also be amplified. So any tsunami more than one meter can be devastating. If we now go to the Bicol area, if there's a magnitude 8.3 earthquake, you would see that in a few minutes, the different places in Bicol and the Visayas uh, will be affected. So if we look at uh, the potential heights, there can be as high as 10 meters in Camarines, six meters in Legaspi, we are in the arrival time of usually less than 10 minutes. Further away, again, it may uh, take more than uh, 30 minutes to one hour. If we now move on to northern eastern Mindanao in the Surigao area, if there is a magnitude 8.2 earthquake, tsunami will uh, uh, cause the uh, tsunami as high as uh, 30 meters and typically more than four meters. The arrival time is between four to 25 minutes. If we now move on further down south in eastern Mindanao, uh, in Davao Oriental area, Davao del Sur area, if there is a magnitude 8.5 earthquake, a tsunami can be generated that will produce tsunamis as high as 14 meters with the arrival time as early as four min three minutes uh, up to 20 minutes. If we now move uh, to the Western Luzon side, for a magnitude 8.4 earthquake, um, there will be tsunamis affecting uh, the uh, uh, Batanis area down to uh, the coastlines of Western Luzon, Mindoro, and Palawan. But of course, the further away, the smaller the tsunami will be. In this uh, scenario, um, we see that as high as 15 meter waves will be produced and the arrival time is as early as two meters, up to 15 minutes. Moving close to Metro Manila, if the earthquake will be offshore of Bataan and Zambales, and with a magnitude 8.3 earthquake, you would see that uh, most of the coastal communities near the epicenter will be affected in a few minutes and would be affecting Metro Manila, like here in the Sangli Point Cavite, uh, after one hour. The projected heights and arrival times are shown on this table. Again, as high as 15 meters and more than one meter in many places. The earliest arrival time will be three minutes uh, in several places up to uh, less than 15 minutes. The difference is in Metro Manila because we are inside a bay which is further out from the trend. So we have enough time in Metro Manila uh, before the arrival of the tsunami after the earthquake. If we now move on to Visayas, we will see that if there is a magnitude 8.2 earthquake, Panay Island, Negros Island, and southwestern Mindanao will be affected. The uh, projected heights uh, are shown again. It's uh, more than 2 meters, up to 11 meters, and the arrival time is uh, very fast, 3, me three minutes, uh, 12 minutes, and further away, further inland, like for example in uh, uh, San Enriquez, Negros Oriental, because it's further inland, it will uh, be uh, a little bit uh, longer. If we now move uh, into the Sambuanga Peninsula, if there's a magnitude 8 earthquake in the Sulu Trends, then we will be able to see tsunamis affecting, again, the Visayas, uh, Sambuanga Peninsula, and even eastern Palawan. Okay? And uh, in 1897, September 21, um, 
an earthquake of such a magnitude occurred and tsunamis affected Sambanga Peninsula up to six meters, um, eastern Palawan by two meters, and even uh, parts of the Visayas, and even reached Bor Borneo. And here are the projected heights of uh, uh, up to close to 10 meters in Baliguan, Sambonga del Norte. Sambonga City would be around four meters. And the arrival time is very fast, two minutes to 15 minutes. Further away, though, uh, from the site will be longer. Lastly, if there will be a repeat of a strong earthquake of 1976 in the Moro Gulf, like a magnitude 8.1 earthquake, we will see the effect uh, in the Moro Gulf and southwestern Mindanao. We expect a tsunami to arrive in two minutes or earlier, uh, or yeah, two minutes uh, or earlier, might be one minute, uh, depending on where the position of the earthquake and tsunami will be. Uh, and the heights will be up to uh, 13 meters and very short uh, lead time. Why is it very short? Because the Cotabato trends is very close to the shoreline. So ladies and gentlemen, tsunamis in the Philippines can move very fast simply because the trenches are closer to our shoreline. And because of this restriction, we need to make sure that people are really, really ready so that if ever there are signs of a possible tsunami, they need to react right away. So how do we actually share these various hazards uh, and potential impact? Uh, information to people. GeostiFevox developed the GeoRisk Philippines platform where there are various uh, applications through mobile gadgets or uh, computers. The first is how to map out all the houses, buildings, uh, and anything on the surface in the Philippines. We have developed the GeoMapper, uh, which uh, we actually launched uh, last July. And this is to develop the what we call exposure data so that we would know right away who can be affected and we can monitor the effects of the disaster immediately after by going back to the same area or people reporting to us what happened to their places. The second is the geoanalytics. It helps local government, national agencies to visualize and assess the impacts of various uh, hazards. And the hazards assessment aspect is facilitated through the Hazard Hunter Philippines, where hazards assessment is at your fingertips and you can get a multi-hazards assessment in less than one minute. For example, in the Hazard Hunter Philippines, if you double tap your finger on a point, you'll be able to know the various hazards immediately. When the hazards will become red, that is the uh, hazard that the community will prepare. It provides you an assessment report and recommended actions. If you're interested, it will also provide you the distance to the nearest critical facility, like hospitals and schools, so that you'll be able to know if the same schools or hospitals that you may need will also be affected. Hazard Hunter can also give you a more detailed tsunami hazards assessment because it can provide you a more detailed map showing, showing you the different areas that would be aff affected by different tsunami heights. It is color-coded, indicating areas prone to various tsunami heights. The geoanalytics uh, P8, uh, on the other hand, will also be able to provide you as a local government, as a national agency, an idea of, for example, how many people are exposed. In this example, we are looking at Barangay Central in Mati, Davao Oriental, and here, we see that around 6,040 or 17% 17, 17 of the population uh, can be affected by the tsunami. We can subdivide the affected population according to their ages and according to the gender. So given this hazards assessment simulations in the Philippines, what would be the total population of uh, people in the Philippines exposed to tsunami? Uh, shown on the table are the various uh, regions, including NCR. And uh, if we sum this up, the total population exposed to tsunami would be close to 14 million. But they will not be affected at the same time. It uh, would depend on where the tsunami would occur. In NCR, for example, the prone population would be around 
2.4 million. And the next highest there will be around 1.6 uh, million in Region 7, uh, 1.2 million in Region 6, and Region 4A around 1 million. If we now focus our attention in Metro Manila, uh, and similar to other uh, assessments, we can provide you with the exposure per, per province, per town, and can also be done for, per barangay. So for example, in Metro Manila, on the left is a map of Metro Manila. And uh, in the middle is a table of the population exposed. In various cities like Manila, Pasay, Navotas, Malabon, Paranaque, Las Piñas, Caloacan, Valenzuela, and Makati, um, cities, or cities in Metro, Metro Manila that have coastal areas. And uh, this can be subdivided into male or female. Again, as mentioned, the total exposure of population in Metro Manila is 2.4 million people. If you talk about buildings uh, of various uses, on the right is a table showing you the building use and the number of structures exposed to tsunami. The total is close to 300,000 uh, structures. Now, if, if, for example, there is a disaster that has happened, uh, we have a uh, tool, part of GeoMapper, called Situation Data Mapper, where you can report a disaster. In fact, uh, we are asking people, because of the recent uh, tropical cyclone, Super Typhoon Rolly, because of strong wind flood and the lahar that uh, it has produced, uh, for crowdsourcing so that people can report a disaster. And this will be used henceforth for all types of disaster. The first survey is a very general survey where people can report the hazard or the disaster that has happened they can post pictures and videos and can type and describe uh, the, uh, the impacts. If they're interested, after conducting the uh, general survey, they can also fill up more detailed survey so that it can uh, help us in uh, refining our assessment tool for possible impacts related strong wind flood and even lahar, so that in the next future events, um, we can improve the forecasted impacts. But um, this is for tsunami, for volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, typhoons, landslides, sinkholes, and other hazards. The URL is there. Uh, the, the, the link is there. We're developing the URL, hopefully within the week, so that uh, people can easily access this and report the disasters to us. How about the second need? The second goal is tsunami detection, warning, and dissemination. This will be very brief. I will share with you what we have done so far in terms of monitoring and alerting. Essentially, we need earthquake detection and sea level detection so that we can monitor the possible tsunami occurrences within the Philippines and those tsunamis coming from other countries within the Pacific. We also need to make sure that people understand that there must be community-based warning by using natural signs. Right now, uh, we have a 107 seismic station all over the country. The 107 station was recently launched or operated last week. And shown on the right would be our data receiving center for data for earthquake and tsunami. Shown in the middle would be an unmanned station, which has a, a satellite communication. We will continue to develop more stations set up in more areas so that we can have better and better and faster location of earthquake events. In terms of sea level monitoring network, we now have 29 tsunami real-time tide gauges, 19 of which would be through the uh, help of JICA. And by the way, for the earthquake stations, we also have been assisted by JICA in some of these stations. And uh, this will ensure that uh, um, the information for earthquake and tsunami that is happening in the Philippines can also be shared with other countries because the protection of one country can mean the protection of others because tsunamis can cross political boundaries. Community tsunami detection and warning systems are developed in areas with base where we put up uh, sea level gauges and warning sirens that would also enable the local government to sound the alarm in case they see the sign of a possible tsunami. In the Philippines, we use a simple tsunami information or warning scheme. 
we we will evacuate once the tsunami information is categorized as tsunami warning. We expect a destructive tsunami of more than one meter, and this would need immediate evacuation of coastal areas. Boats at sea are advised to stay offshore in deep waters. If, if it's a local tsunami, and we think that the magnitude is large enough and we don't have enough time, and it can generate more than one meter tsunami, we will issue immediately a tsunami warning. However, for distant tsunamis, where we might have enough time, if there is a large earthquake event, we can declare an advisory of no tsunami threat if we're sure that there will be no tsunami, or an advisory that we will say that we are monitoring the sea level so that the tsunamis affecting other countries we can monitor from the uh, uh, data receiving center of PVOX and assess whether this will affect the Philippines. If we think the tsunamis generated in other countries will not affect the Philippines, we will issue a no tsunami threat. However, if the tsunami from other countries will cause waves of less than one meter, this is still destructive for those very near the coast. Hence, people will be advised to stay away from the coast. People with houses very near the beach will be advised to move inland by a few meters and boats at sea are advised to stay offshore in deep waters. However, as mentioned, local tsunamis can be very fast. We need to tell people that there are natural signs of an impending local tsunami. And these three signs can be remembered through three words, shake, drop, and roar. Shake, the strong earthquake, malakas na lindol. Drop, usually the water would recede fast. Sometimes it's rise, but typically it's drop. A third is the unusual sound of the returning wave, the tsunami. So we call it a roar. So shake, drop, and roar. People should immediately move inland or go to tall, strong buildings in case they, see a, they feel a strong earthquake or when they now see a sudden drop of seawater after the shaking. If they have not moved at all, once they hear the tsunami, there are unusual sound, there might not be enough time. They really need to respond immediately. Given the hazard assessment, given the monitoring that will be provided, the information will be provided to them. We have to make sure though that communities know what to do. Because this is the most important part. We need to enhance the preparedness and effective response of the community. The OSTP walks have produced guidelines for earthquake and tsunami. These are also available in the website and we have been distributing this. We have also developed other information materials like posters and comics and a guide to develop a tsunami prepared already community. These are also available. Uh, in the social media, of course, we develop uh, social media cards for people to understand what tsunamis and earthquakes are. What is important though, is to enable the community to have a community-based early warning for tsunami and they conduct tsunami preparedness planning and drills. This would um, essentially contain the following activities, development of evacuation plans based on the hazard maps, uh, the installation of different types of signage, uh, signage for hazard, signage for the evacuation area, signage for the direction to go to the evacuation area, the conduct of uh, seminars and lectures, and lastly, the drills. This is being done. For example, PVOX uh, developed uh, a tsunami signage uh, where the uh, symbol of a hazard, a refuge site or evacuation site, and the direction is denoted. And typically, we want a local dialect uh, uh, to explain the sign and an English subtitle so that foreigners or those who do not know uh, the uh, local dialect would be able to understand. Okay, so we have a hazard prone signage, directional signage, and evacuation site signage. We have done uh, many uh, pilot areas for establishment of community based early warning system um, together with national organizations. These are shown on the left, but mostly with local governments, which are shown on the right. But notice that there are still many black spaces and we need the local government and the community themselves to have this 
preparedness activities. Lastly, we also have developed a teaching and learning guide for teachers. We have a guidebook for communicating volcano, earthquake, and tsunami impacts and preparedness for deaf ed elementary teachers, for high school science teachers, and for disaster risk reduction focal persons of deaf ed. We have been conducting training for teachers and local governments uh, lately. International cooperation and coordination. To strengthen our tsunami warning, preparedness, and emergency response, we continue to collaborate and coordinate with many organizations like UNESCO, Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission, the International Tsunami Information Center, the Pacific Tsunami War Warning Center based in Hawaii, the Japan International Cooperation Agency, Japan Meteorological Agency, the Regional Integrated Multi-Hazard Early Warning System based in Bangkok. We actually assisted them in the development of our center. And we coordinate with various tsunami advisory centers as part of the Pacific Tsunami Warning System, which are based in the Pacific in Hawaii, in Japan, and China. And lastly, we work together with the United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction. The World Tsunami Day commemoration is an important part of our international collaboration and also education campaign. We have uh, uh, a digital poster making contest and a slogan making contest uh, this uh, October. And today we will announce the winner. And as mentioned by Dr. Villegas, we have various activities for the World Tsunami Awareness Day. Ladies and gentlemen, our country is prone to various hazards. We have seen the devastation from Super Typhoon Rolly and its impacts on uh, houses because of uh, the strong wind, the flooding and the lahar in many places. We need to make sure that we work together to overcome this. But most importantly, better if we are more prepared. We have science, technology, and innovation from DOST that can help in preparedness and disaster reduction. We need to use it but we need to share this information to the communities and the public. And I'd like to thank the presence of our media partners, the Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Officers for attending this webinar so that we can make our country not only a place fun to live, but also a place where we can live safely despite the threats of nature. Maraming pong salamat sa inyong lahat. Okay, thank you, uh, Yusek Solidum, uh, for a very, very detailed descriptions of our initiatives on Tsunami DRR. Um, before we proceed with the question and answer, which we will do a bit later, uh, may we introduce, sir, uh, a very short video on Tsunami Ready that was produced by the UNDRR. Uh, this is uh, something that we worked with together with the UN and IOC. And uh, sir, uh, yes. maybe show the video, uh, yes, Lucy. Uh... an archipelagic country. Many of its cities and towns are located along the coasts. In our estimate, around 10 million people are exposed to tsunami hazards. We have been using science, technology, and innovation coupled with community preparedness at the local level, from the city down to what we call the village of barangay level, so that people have an understanding of the hazards, the possible impacts, and the safe areas so that they are able to develop a tsunami safe and tsunami ready community. Having this science based information make people more uh, realize that uh, even though they have not experienced tsunami, um, that they can be affected by a tsunami. What we're trying to do 
is combine both science, technology, innovation, and community work to make people better prepared. We need to make sure that people understand that their safety relies on their early action by providing them science-based information and making sure that we actually engage them and uh, help them develop their own community preparedness and evacuation plan. Okay, thank you. Um, that uh, very short Tsunami Ready video is part of a set of videos produced by UNDRR and IOC for World Tsunami Awareness Day. And you can actually find this uh, YouTube site ng UNDRR or uh, today we will be actually posting that and sharing that sa FB po natin. So makukuha nyo na rin po if you'd like to have a copy. And together with uh, uh, the this uh, today's uh, presentations. So, sir, may we proceed now to the announcement of winners? Yes, please go ahead. Yes. Okay, so I'm trying to find my slides. Uh, as part of the, the World Tsunami Awareness Celebration, one of the activities that we launched last September is what we call uh, slogan and the digital poster making. It's actually online because of the adjustments that we had to do. Uh, we posted this last September 25. We put up the announcement and the entries uh, was open until October 18. So ito po yung mga re uh, required na qualifications, criteria that we'll be using. So it's a full announcement that we made for a month. Um, so actually we received a total of 157 slogan entries and 76 poster entries. And uh, we did, we have a technical working group who did the uh, pre-screening. And so yung pong 157, uh, na limit na po sa 56 based on our screening. So, and yung 76 posters went down to 25. And this will be the ones that will go through the final judges assessment. And here sa process na to, the ranking of the pre-screened entries were conducted until we finally got the top three finalists. And yung top three finalists na yan, ang na, napunta sa final deliberation. And so yung final ranking dito na po ginawa. So actually we would like to thank and acknowledge our panel of judges who worked with Yusek Saludum and myself and the technical working group for this. Uh, Dr. Paul Carson Alanis, Dr. Maria Leonila Bautista, Ms. Malu del Rosario, Dr. Teresito Bacolcol, Dr. Arturo Daag, Mr. Ryan Rebadulia. Nandito po sila ngayon at nakikinig. I think they're as, just as curious as to finally who made it to the top three based on the uh, short list that they made. Maraming salamat po sa inyong oras at panahon for this. Uh, for a brief uh, background, we had 157 registered entries for the slogan making contest. Uh, mas marami po ang mga kababaihan, mga youth natin. This is actually per, uh, participated in by our very young uh, mga artists and about 31% ng males. From 33 provinces, ito po yung nakakatuwa dito. Ang dami po nang nag-participate. Maraming salamat. And ito po yung age, range, age ranges nila from 12 to 17 years old. Now, ang criteria, syempre, 30% content, relevance to the theme, explanation in the video, 25% for style, 20% for clarity, 
and 15% for impact and 10% for grammatical. Yeah, you know, it has to be error free from grammar, uh, grammatical errors and typos. And my prices, siempre, 5,000 for the first price, 3,000 for the second, and 1,000 for the third price. For the digital poster making contest, we received 76 registered entries, 44% uh, males and 56% females from 25 provinces. Ito po ang breakdown ng age ranges natin dito. Pinakamadami pa din po uh, around 16 years old. And criteria, content, design, impact, and overall aesthetic, 15%. Uh, and prices po natin, third price, 3000 2000 for the silver. Uh, and first price po ay 17000 Sir? Yes. Um, may we request you, Sexually Doom, to please do the honors to announce okay. the winners. Well, I'm very happy that there have been many entries. And uh, uh, the entries are very, very nice and very good. So it's really a close... Uh, contest among the uh, participants. So next slide will show you the winners. And Great the third prize. prize would be uh, on the slogan making contest. Uh, as an entry, kahandaan at kaalaman, magkatuwang na kailangan upang tsunami mapagtagumpayan. And the third frame. The next frame, please. And the uh, name of the uh, third place winner is Princess Inomi Sisante from Imos Pilot Elementary School, Cavite Province. Congratulations, Princess. Next. Entry number two, second uh, place, has this. Maging alerto sa kapaligiran. Lumayo sa dalampasigan. Magkaisat magtulungan. Chuck tsunami malalagpasan. Next. And this entry was given by Hannah Grace G. Ondag from Adventist University of the Philippines from Silang, Cavite Province. Oh, parehong taga Cavite ang third and second placer. Next. First prize has an entry, Tsunami Wag Maliitin. Wastong Impormasyon Alamin. Babala ay sundin, paghahanda o galiin. Next. And this entry was given by Trixie May D. Del Rosario of General Emilio Aguinaldo National High School, again, from Cavite, from Bacoor City in Cavite. So mga taga Cavite, mga Cavitenyo, one, two, and three po kayo sa Slogan making contest. Next is the digital poster making contest winners. Next, this is the entry. For third place, we see uh, in our glass uh, with the title World Tsunami Awareness Day 2020. And on the left side of our glass would be activities that people would do. Listening, being educated, staying away from homes, getting to high ground and being alert so that they can evacuate immediately. And on the right side is the tsunami and is being prevented. Next, this was submitted by Darlene Maris Sunglau from Tagbilaran City Science High School, Bohol Province. Congratulations. The second winner uh, has this entry. No? Uh, you have a tsunami uh, below uh, and the coronavirus symbol, uh, a boy with a mask with his go bag. And on the left side, you will have uh, families listening, getting educated, uh, getting alerted with planning. And on the right side would be the evacuation no? uh, on elevated ground. So congratulations, very, very nice digital poster. This was submitted by Hannah Paula Ramirez from Santo Domingo National High School in uh, Santo Domingo, Albay Province. Congratulations, Hannah. 
Okay, so for the first prize, uh, what for is the drum roll? Asa ng drum roll nyo? Ano wala? The first prize as this entry. Okay? Because of the new normal, we have been... Uh, being, we have been attending webinars, being educated, being alerted to the social media. So now me on the left, we uh, actually have a person on the right responding to uh, the earthquake by doing the drop, cover, and hold. We are being alerted through various means, through cell phones, social media, and families uh, evacuating with physical distancing, uh, uh, following the direction of cyanide to an elevated ground. On the top right would be a siren sounding the alarm. So very, very nice uh, poster as well. Congratulations. So the name of our first prize winner is Marianne Faith Aviso from Palo Leite. So for the poster making contest, it came from various places from Bohol, third place, second place from Albay, and first place from Leite. Congratulations to all the winners. Thank you for your participation. And we hope that the slogan making and poster making contest helps in educating the public and making them more aware of tsunami and why we need to prepare for this. Okay, congratulations to all the winners. Uh, maraming, maramat, maraming salamat sa participation. Um, actually, nandito po sila, nandyan po sa ating audience ngayon. Uh, wala nga lang pong physical uh, awarding. But uh, we also would like to congratulate the parents and the guardians um, for supporting uh, our students and the teachers, of course, for being here today. And again, salamat sa mga judges for taking the time to view all the entries uh, two weeks ago. Okay, sir. Hello. Now we may proceed. Yes, uh, Lucy. Ah, may video pala. Yeah, we have a video for the entries. Okay, go ahead. Kapag sa ilalim ng dagat nagmula ang lindol Dagat, bababa, ito'y uurong Pagbalik maririnig, malakas na ugong Malilikahid ang buhala, sunod-sunod na alon Pwersa nito ay sobrang lakas Lampas limang metro, along hahampas Kaya doon lumikas sa lugar na mataas Plano sa pagligas, susi upang maging ligtas Tsunami, tsunami, karya na sa isang isap Tsunami, tsunami, kailangang maging magam Tsunami, tsunami, karya na sa isang isap Tsunami, tsunami, kailangang maging magam Lampas limang metro, along hahampas Kaya doon lumikas sa lugar na mataas Lalo sa paglikas, susi upang maging ligtas Tsunami, tsunami, karya na sa isang isap Tsunami, tsunami, kailangang maging magam Tsunami, tsunami Narya na sa isang isang Tsunami, tsunami Kailangang maging maga Tsunami, tsunami, tsunami Tsunami, tsunami, tsunami Tsunami, tsunami, tsunami Any comments, sir? 
Well, uh, ako'y nagagala kasi napakaganda ng mga entry. The entries are very good. Mahirap piliin uh, both for the slogan making and poster, uh, digital poster making contest. And I hope that you are inspired by what you're doing because right now we need the youth to really um, be part of the effort of our society to educate others so that we as a country will be safer and better prepared for these various disasters. Maraming marami pong salamat sa mga sumale and of course to the parents and to the teachers who have guided uh, this uh, uh, students and the youth who participated. Okay, thank you, sir. Nakita nyo kung gano kahalaga po ang boses ng ati mga kabataan. And uh, I would like to uh, request, I think, Miss Lucy, uh, this uh, short video of the entries will be posted sa YouTube channel natin, ano? Para ma-access naman ng mga uh, kabataan na nag-submit ng entries nila so that they can see. That we should be proud of the entries that they submitted kasi ang gaganda po. Maraming maraming salamat po. I think it's about time that we move on, sir, to our question and answer portion. Uh, we actually received a lot of questions na nas, nakalista na dito, nasa kabilang screen. Uh, okay na po, sir, magtanong? Yes, please go ahead. Okay. Pwede pa po kayo mag-post ng questions nyo sa Zoom dito or sa, uh, sa FB po natin. Naka-FB live po tayo. At uh, Hanggang nandito pa po si Yusek Solidum, hindi po naman siya alis agad. Uh, dito sa Zoom, meron po tayong katanungan from Christian Auman, DepEd, Mandawi City. Good morning po. Tanong ko lang po, nagmamatter po ba ang depth ng earthquake para magka-generate ng tsunami? Gaano po kalalim ang hypocenter depth para makapag-generate ng tsunami? Yes, a very good question. Uh, the... Uh... The depth of the tsunami that will matter you know, uh, would be dependent on the magnitude uh, that the earthquake has. Um, for a magnitude 7 earthquake, for it to really generate the tsunami, we consider uh, less than 30 uh, uh, to 50 kilometers. Sometimes, if it's very large, close to magnitude 8 to 9, uh, we now can have a, a tsunami even, as, uh, if, even if the earthquake has a depth of around 70 kilometers. So uh, the important thing is the ocean floor is lifted up so that the water above it can also be lifted. So if the earthquake is like 100 kilometers and it's a magnitude 7 and offshore, we usually don't worry about that earthquake generating a tsunami. It's already too deep. OK. Uh, punta tayo sa FB, sir. I think it's related to that. Sabi po, tinatanong po ni Lexi Masiglat o C.D. Uh, Calabarzon, question, how strong does an earthquake should be to be able to generate a tsunami? You kind of mentioned it earlier. Yes, uh, in the Philippines, based on our experience, yung experience po natin, may tsunami na ng magnitude 6.5, pero ito po ay maliliit lamang. No? And again, usually kasi, the uh, displacement po ng uh, trends or fault uh, will actually give us an idea of what the magnitude is. No? So the larger the magnitude, the displacement will be bigger. So kung ang displacement ay vertical, then the larger the displacement of the water will be, the higher the tsunami will be. So magnitude 6.5 ang minimum na ginagamit namin. Okay, thank you, sir. Magnitude 6.5 and siyempre depth po is very important. The shallower it is, and mas mataas ang displacement, mas... Um, Malaking tsunami. Sir, next question from AUP Academy, Urgeline de la Cruz. Aside from earthquakes, are there any impending signs for us to know if there will be possible tsunami that might occur? Yes, okay. Uh, of course, the first sign is a tsunami. The second is the sudden drop of water. If you're near the coastline, kung nasa dalampasigin kayo, kapag biglang bumaba ang tubig, then that's a sure sign na may paparating na tsunami. Now, you have to be careful because you really need to have observed the sea. No? Kung before the earthquake, talaga mataas pa, and then suddenly after the earthquake, muba, then that is okay. However, sometimes people mistake the retreat of seawater because of low tide as a sign after an earthquake. Kasi dahan-dahan po yun. And the tsunami will have to come back immediately. In less than 30 minutes, dapat may bumalik ng alon dyan if it's a tsunami. 
But if you have waited after an earthquake and you saw the water retreat and it's like 10 hours, 12 hours, a low tide lang po yan. Huh? So you have to be careful of the sequence. And then the unusual sound uh, of an incoming tsunami. That's the third sign. Okay, thank you, sir. Natural signs, very important, lalo na po sa mga coastal communities. Uh, this one is from um, Bell Surara of DZEC Radio, Aguila, Net25. May mga classifications or variations po ba ang tsunami? Prone ba ang Pilipinas sa tsunami? Why? Okay. Ano po ang factors uh, na prone sa tsunami? Thank you. Okay. Uh, tsunamis can be generated so by four uh, processes. So sometimes uh, they can be related to an earthquake event, can be associated with a submarine landslide, can be associated with a volcanic activity or meteor impact. But in the Philippines, we classify this into two for warning purposes. Local tsunami, again, these are generated by earthquakes or landslides uh, within the Philippines. And the arrival time is so fast, might be one minute, two minutes, typically less than 15 minutes. And uh, the second type is the distant or far field tsunami. These are tsunamis generated by earthquakes coming from other countries within the Pacific Ocean. There we have uh, more than one hour lead time up to 26 hours. So when it comes to response, then we can take it a little bit uh, slower and uh, more sure in terms of what can happen if it's really coming from the other side of the Pacific. Now, the reason obviously is that uh, uh, we have a lot of faults and uh, trenches, uh, big faults offshore uh, that generate tsunami. That is why both the Eastern and Western shorelines of the country are prone to large tsunamis. And those in the middle, the inland coast can still be affected by smaller tsunami waves because of uh, fault movement or submarine landslides. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have another question. This time it's from Camille Samante of News 5, sir. Uh, are Filipino communities prepared for a tsunami? Gaano kahirap po when natural disasters strike during a pandemic? Well, the prepar preparedness of communities in the Philippines are not even. Uh, marami po mga naghahanda pero sa tsunami um, and uh, actually this uh, preparedness in some towns in eastern Philippines uh, was tested when Super Typhoon Yolanda came. No? Uh, prior po sa Super Typhoon Yolanda, uh, we actually went to many places in eastern Philippines. Uh, uh, myself, Dr. Villegas and many other staff of PVOX because we see the threat of a large tsunami on, on their side. And we encourage them na magkaroon ng community tsunami preparedness. And of course, uh, tsunami and storm surges are very similar, but storm surges, uh, when you respond to it, you also need to worry about the strong wind. No? So as I have shown you in one of my slides, uh, there were uh, communities already preparing for tsunami. Uh, but still, we need to cover more. Uh, I'm glad, though, that there are other organizations that uh, are doing this. Uh, in government, we have the Office of Civil Defense, um, DILG, also through uh, their various agencies. They have focused on the eastern side of the Philippines and many other international partners uh, that also are assisting many communities. But we need to do, to do more. Now, preparing for... Uh, a tsunami and conducting community tsunami preparedness uh, is a little bit difficult now during the COVID-19 pandemic uh, because uh, we are not able to really go down to the community and talk to people. Uh, before, uh, we actually go down to various communities and conduct in, uh, lectures in the evening because uh, coastal areas, you have many fishermen uh, in the evening or in the following day when, when they come. So, but uh, we usually have an evening session so that all people who are working in the daytime can also attend. But uh, on the other side, uh, the uh, pandemic has caused us to actually have more people listen uh, all over the country because of the social media platform and the 
uh, webinars that we have. So we can actually, we reach more people uh, in terms of information campaign. And we hope that the local government disaster managers will be able to do now the actual preparedness at the community level. We just finished a tsunami summit uh, for Mindanao, disaster managers, DOST, and OCD staff. Uh, and uh, we will continue to do so in this uh, summit. It was a month long activity uh, where we subdivided seminars uh, on essentially what we, we will also be sharing with you in the next webinars, the hazards assessment and how to develop a community prepared, uh, sorry, a tsunami prepared community. Okay, thank you, sir. We still have a bunch of questions, uh, FB chat uh, comment section. Uh, one is from Erika Mamag of DOS NCR. Curious po if this, I think these are the simulations you showed earlier. Simu tsunami simulation data available to the public and how can we access them po? Thank you. Okay, I think there, you are the second group to see the simulation. Uh, we can, we actually have many simulation uh, presented even way back in 2014. What is available are the maps out of the simulation. Uh, and we can actually share with you some of the simulation for educational purposes. Now, the simulation can actually be produced by people who have been trained uh, with the use of the Reda software. There, there is a, a module called True Sim Tsunami Simulation uh, Software. And uh, they can actually simulate uh, different magnitudes and depths of earthquake, and they find out what height of a tsunami and arrival time will happen. On the FIVOX side, no, just so have, you have an understanding of how we actually uh, monitor and forecast a possible tsunami and identify which areas need to evacuate, we have developed uh, uh, a database with 30,000 tsunami simulation no? out of the simulations that uh, 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 we have, we, all, we only showed you some of the simulations for special uh, places in the Philippines. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, okay, one more. Uh, there's a question coming from Leslie Common, Barangay Fairview, Quezon City. Tanong po niya, bakit po apektado pati ang bahagi ng bataan nakaharap sa Pampanga? Eh, di naman harap ng trench sa West Philippine Sea. Okay, Dapat naglalagay din kayo ng classification ng primary or secondary, or secondary affected para maintindihan ng klaro kung paano makaka-apekto sa lahat ng Pilipinas. Okay. Lumalabas lahat, pati kasuluk-sulukan ng coastal shore ng Pilipinas, apektado pa rin ng tsunami. Good discussion, sir. Yan. Tama po yun. Hindi po yun mali. Uh, primary hazard po yung tsunami. Bakit po? Basta may lulusutan yung tubig, as long as there's a pathway for tsunami to enter, it will enter. For example, the Manila Trend tsunami will enter Manila Bay through uh, the Passage Verde Island in Lubang and also to uh, Manila Bay through the Kavit Batangas Cavite area. Pagpasok po ng tsunami doon, they cannot escape right away. There will be many waves. So both Coastal cities of Metro Manila, Bulacan, Pampanga, and Bataan facing uh, Man Manila within the Manila Bay will be affected by a tsunami much later. But those facing the West Philippine Sea from Bataan Zambales will be affected by a tsunami in a few minutes, in less than 10 minutes. Pareho pong primary hazard yun, hindi po yun secondary hazard. Again, in some other inland areas, yung color blue po, no? color blue, Ito po ay tsunami hazards, but not the trends. Kaya nga kulay blue po yon, dahil po sa mga offshore faults and submarine landslide. Kaya nga nagkahiwalay po yun. Yun po yung classification sa threat. Okay, thank you, sir. So at least as explains, uh, yun po mga pinapakita na map. Uh, we have here from, uh, ay kilala niyo, sir, Jake Rom Kadag, Department of Geography. With the simulations and models we have, should we require all NGUs to identify or mark a higher place in the barangay or municipality where it is safe to evacuate in case of a warning of tsunami? And 
this is a physical mark like a flag or post with clear marking tsunami safe area or something like that? Yes, uh, the answer to those questions uh, would be yes. That is why uh, we have recommended tsunami signage. One is the definition of a hazard area. The second would be where the selected, the ter term that we usually, uh, usually use internationally is tsunami refuge site, or you can call it evacuation site. It's a temporary site. You just need uh, an elevated ground. The only problem is if there's a typhoon and there will be a tsunami. That is really very difficult. So what we need to do is identify an evacuation area that is safe from landslides because of earthquake and the, the passage, the route that you should uh, identify to the evacuation area should also be safe from landslide and other earthquake hazards. Because remember, we are dealing not only of a tsunami, but other earthquake hazards that will occur simultaneously. So we need to have the signage. Um, you, the, the community can have their own way of identifying the signage at the evacuation site, but we would recommend also putting up uh, signage. They can paint these themselves. And this will be discussed tomorrow morning in a webinar on uh, the on community preparedness for tsunami. Yung seminar na ready ka ba sa tsunami? Okay, thank you. Um, uh, and part of it, sir, di ba, marami na rin tayo mga collaborations with local government units about yeah. uh, identifying evacuation sites. Yeah. The, the question is, how many evacuation sites you, do you need to develop? Depending on the population, depending on the geography, um, you can have more than one, right? Uh, but not too many because once there's a real tsunami, um, we need to actually, well, in the new normal, the better, the, uh, the, the more the better. But when it comes to real handling of the crisis, it will be very difficult to handle too many people scattered all over. Okay, thank you, sir. Two similar questions coming from Isa sa FB, Isa sa Zoom. You, from AUP Academy, the Ergelin de la Cruz, and si Jerome Dadole naman ng USTP, ang question sila, how can we conduct uh, or how to plan and ex execute a tsunami drill? My flyer's oh, eyes, sir. Yeah, this will also be covered tomorrow morning, but it's just like an earthquake drill. You have to start by responding to an earthquake. Now we have to be alive to escape from a tsunami. We need to be protected from falling objects. So. First is we need to prepare for the strong earthquake, do the drop cover and hold, and evacuate out of the house or building. And immediately, if there's a threat for tsunami, go to elevated ground away from the shoreline, or if not like in the city of Manila, select tall and strong buildings to uh, have a vertical evacuation, not horizontal. So those are the things that uh, uh, are done, but to decide, which areas will be evacuated or not, which areas are dangerous, you need to look at the hazard map. That is why you can use the Hazard Hunter application to find out which areas, which families need to evacuate and where you actually designate an evacuation site. Ayan. And if you want to know more details about the, uh, how to conduct a tsunami drill, may flyers put tayo available, sir. And this will also be discussed tomorrow. Yes, yes. Okay. My question for I think she's he's from Jensen, obviously. Uh, DC or MPC Patrick James D. Mayol. Hi, Director Yusek Subibu. Yusek po. Uh, is Jensen Sarangani prone to tsunami? Where can we access history of tsunami in the area? Marami salamat po and mabuhay kayo. Yes, the answer is yes. Uh, we have maps for your places. Um, and the tsunami history of the area, we can provide you. Uh, actually, have the given lectures for all the regions way back in for the past many years. But if you want to actually know the history of tsunami in the Philippines, we have a tsunami catalog uh, authored by FIMOC staff and led by Dr. Yunila Bautista, who is also the lead for the Reda software. Uh, it's available in the website. You just register, and then you can download uh, the history. If you have more questions, you can write us so that we can we can provide you with uh, detailed information or if you have questions. Okay, thank you, sir. One question from 
uh, Vladimir Duboset, uh, Ginoog, CDRMO. Is there any high possibility of experiencing tsunami even there is no information of fault system in our area? Maybe that's related to isa pa po, sir, no? um, question. Uh, can tsunamis be triggered by other causes? So. Okay. Especially for those of you who are in uh, the inland uh, coasts away from trenches like Gingoog, um, the reason why we have placed the blue-colored uh, coastal lines there is that um, there are cases where strong earthquakes, even inland, can cause submarine landslides. No? And if there are areas that there, there would be submarine faults that would move vertic uh, vertically, then there can be tsunamis. But the, the threat of a tsunami uh, for those coastal uh, inland areas will be lesser than those fronting trenches. So, kung nyari, gingog, may threat pa rin kayo, but not as high as those facing the Pacific Ocean, the Celebes Sea, or Sulu Sea, or West Philippine Sea. Uh, we are just taking into account the possibility that there can be submarine landslide because there are large faults uh, there that can generate large earthquake events within yeah. your region, not, not nearby your place, but within your region. Okay. The, uh, so, nasagot pa po yung tanong ni Lino Sambilio Jr., yung ibang triggers ng tsunami. Okay, yeah. The triggers will be, aside from earthquakes related to trenches, would be submarine landslides and earthquakes related to offshore faults. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, ito ay question mula sa ating estudyante, si Gord John Pedro, a student ng SPCCF. How far po yung kayang abutin ng tsunami? Well, the tsunami can, uh, in the Pacific Ocean, if you have a large magnitude earthquake, uh, it can cross the whole Pacific Ocean basin. No? Uh, it again depends on the magnitude uh, of the earthquake. So across the Pacific, uh, very, very far, tens of thousands, thousands of kilometers. Within the Philippines, for example, if there's a tsunami in the uh, Eastern Philippines along the Philippine Trends, no? facing the Philippine Sea, if, for example, uh, uh, kunyari lang, nasa eastern Philippines, eastern Visayas ang, ang earthquake and tsunami, the whole coastlines in the north, in Cagayan Valley and those further down south, in Davao Oriental area, can be affected by a tsunami. As long as the, there is energy, uh, the tsunami can enter uh, uh, areas or, or go to areas uh, uh, north or south or east or west of the of the source. Thank you, sir. Um, question again. Is it possible na mag-generate din po sa Laguna de Bay ang tsunami? Okay, actually that is a common question. Um, the Laguna de Bay is a very shallow water. So if, for example, the West Valley Fault will move because it uh, transects the western side of Laguna de Bay, what we think would be the oscillation of uh, lake water. We call it a size, S-E-I-C-H-C, -E, lake water oscillation. No? So there can be waves, but not as uh, like a tsunami where it will rush towards the shoreline. So the immediate threat in the lake shores of uh, Laguna de Bay would be liquefaction, lambot po yung lupa, and strong ground shaking. And uh, another question. I don't think this is his real name kasi nakalagay Clark's Law. Palagay ko ito yung ginamit niya. Hi, sir. Is there or where can we find the hazard map for tsunami? Especially here in Region 10. Okay. The uh, tsunami hazard maps can be uh, sourced from the website of PVOX or you can use the Hazard Hunter PH. You can actually just click any area and uh, you can assess the hazard. And you can actually download maps from the Hazard Hunter. So yun, uh, Yusek, kanina pa po nila binabanggit uh, ni Yusek yung tungkol sa Red FM sa Hazard Hunters. So I hope uh, try nyo pong uh, i-access para makita nyo po the features. Um, wala na bang questions, Missy and uh, Hane, coming in from uh, FB? Ah, hindi ko kasi nagkita sa yung FB. Any other questions? Meron pa?
Ah, okay. So, ang sabi sa akin, I think, sir, yun na po ang uh, last of the questions okay. that we have. Yes, sir. Any other additional comments from you, sir, before we proceed? Okay. Uh, remember, I showed you uh, one of the apps that uh, we just developed, yung Report a Disaster. So, maybe for, for those of you who are here and our media friends, we'd also like to request you to uh, actually inform the public that they can report a disaster through that. Um, uh, application so that uh, we'll, uh, we'll be able to know immediately what is happening and this can be shared to other agencies plus and this will be used for uh, application for improving of the risk assessment or forecasting the possible impact. This will be shared uh, with other government agencies and the academe who would need those information. Um, uh, Bitly no, report disaster. Um, we thought, okay, we have to share the slide first. Um, we go close na po natin, but before we really close the program, unahin ko muna announcement. Uh, people are requesting po ng group photo. Sandali po. Okay. So again, I would like to remind all of you, ating po mga kasama ngayon, uh, ito pong World Tsunami Awareness Day, uh, umpisa pa lang ngayong umaga, later this afternoon, we'll be having with us Robilyn uh, Mangahas to talk about uh, tsunami hazards and risks in the Philippines. Ang kanyang title ay Baybayin ng Pinas sa Tsunami Diligtas. And then tomorrow, we will be having Engineer Erlington Olavere to talk about Tsunami Ready ka na ba? So ito po sila, uh, ang ating announcement card for them. Uh, we would like to invite all of you to please uh, listen to these lectures. Very significant po. Uh, lalo na po yung ating mga kasama ngayong umaga. Maganda po mapanood. And makikita rin po siya sa FB. And we also would like to um, announce, si Yusek po then I invited to a webinar um, organized by the uh, Office of Civil Defense. Webinar on Tsunami Preparedness. That will be on November 10, 2020. Sa announcement po nila, sir, walang oras. May time na po ba to? Ano, ano, November 10 is in the morning. Uh, morning daw. Okay, yes. sir. So, and that is actually in preparation for the NSAID Nationwide Simultaneous Earthquake Drill yes, sa the... November 12. Yeah. And Eileen, yes, sir. Uh, huwag natin kalimutan, uh, for the Department of Science and Technology, we will uh, have the first ever virtual National Science and Technology Week. November yes, 23 to 29. So you're, if you're interested in technologies for disasters, for COVID, for kabuhayan, livelihood, for health, kalusugan, for education, okay, nabukasan, and of course, uh, disaster uh, and uh, law and order, yung kayusan will be there. And for FIWOX and Pagasa, we will be having a webinar for everyone related to various hazards, no? Uh, please uh, check also the DOST website and uh, social media for the details. But uh, FIVOX will also be posting the announcement uh, in, the future, in the immediate future. Okay, before we finally end, may we request all of our uh, guests this morning on Zoom to please turn on your video for the, <laughs> the usual uh, photo. Get that in your group picture. Natin. As Pacino Mako Q, uh, Daini or Lucy? Um, si Daini po yung kukuha. Uh -huh. So, kung ready na po, ready na po tayo. Please go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sandali wala po lang ang video. So, I have to show my face. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Next. Apat na panels po kasi. Uh, so, smile lang for all, all throughout. <laughs> One, two, three. Ilan na, Dali po. 
Yan. Next po. Next na. One, two, three. Okay. Yan na po yung last. Marami pong salamat. Ay, meron pa daw isa. Sige. Sorry. Another po. Apat okay, na wala pa. lang naka-open na camera daw. Sige po. One, two, three. Okay, thank you po. So that ends our um, info central for this month. Uh, kaya kaya susunod, we will uh, give you an announcement for that. But again, we'd like to thank all of you. Uh, sa ngalan po ni uh, ng Fivox, ng mga kasama ko na nag-organize nito, kami po ay nagpapasalamat sa inyong lahat sa pagdalo. And congratulations to all the winners. Sir, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, well, if you're interested for your school or for your community to engage us for preparedness, awareness, just write a Fivox and uh, we will schedule with you uh, your uh, requested activity. Thank you, uh, JICA Philippine Office for, uh, again, gracing the occasion. Every year, kasama namin sila. Maraming salamat po. Yes. Uh, for the evaluation po, may nakapost po na link. Please check po the evaluation. Please answer. Thank you po.